Our first guest, an aspiring young Canadian who makes a difference through RBC's Make 150 Count campaign. Her name is Jordan Lackner. Jordan, welcome to daytime. Thank you. I was reading about you last night, so I know that you are very humble, but I have to say, you're a member of the Whitby Youth Council, the Whitby Federal Youth Council, a competitive cheerleader for the last eight years at Cheer Strong Inc., and a coach in training for two teams at your cheer gym, and the list goes on and on. You're an honor student, but I think what really hits me the most in all of it is that you are a person with a heart for making a difference in our community, <laughs> and one of the ways you're making the difference is through the Make 150 Count campaign with RBC. Tell us about the campaign and the letter you submitted. Well, um, for me, the campaign is all about making inclusive like, and diverse communities and kind of getting youth more involved. Um, and so for me, the reason I submitted was because I was on the Youth Council and we had a representative from RBC on the council who was given two packages to give to two youth. And so they asked us to submit ideas. And I just thought, oh, well, the team at my cheer gym, I really want to do something for them because they've given me so much. And so I decided to submit my idea of taking them out for a fun night of bowling. And I got a package. And so that's kind of, it just went on from there, really. Now, the team that you wanted to take bowling, that's the special needs team? Yes. Why is it so important to you working with special needs? Um, for me, it's really important to work with special needs because they teach me how to face everyday challenges and kind of like break down those barriers and they're just so happy and like I feel like everyone just needs like a bit more happiness in their life. So, so the Make 150 Count campaign, RBC was listening to people like you mm -hmm. who wanted to make a difference and they gave you $150 to do that, no strings attached. Yeah. And we actually have a clip of that day because they gave you the money and you took this team bowling. So let's roll that clip now. a result of that one team building day? Um, I found that they did really come together more as a team um, because there are 17 athletes and about like 10 to 12 um, volunteer coaches and then our main coach Terry and so I feel as though we all kind of got time to actually connect with one another and kind of like bond. Yeah that makes a lot of sense. What is your hope for other youth in the community? Would you, how would you inspire them to step up and also make a difference? Um, well, I kind of would tell people if I could, like, to just kind of get out there, like, put yourself out there and kind of, if you want to do something, do it and just try to make a difference in your community and really try to get involved with something that you enjoy doing that would make a difference. I want to talk about your cheering and your cheer team and what you do. And I think we also have a clip of that. So if we can roll that clip and you can tell us while it's playing what's happening. Um, so yeah, they're just kind of like warming up and playing activities well um, in the middle of practice because they've had a really good practice so far. Um, and then now we're doing some of the routine with the athletes. <laughs> How are the parents reacting to this night out? Um, the parents were actually really excited about it. They were 100% on board. Um, I got a lot of positive feedback from them. When I originally said I want to do this, I was kind of worried just because like there's so many athletes and parents involved and everyone was right on board and really happy and so it worked out really well. What are your plans next for, for making a difference or in continuing with cheer? Um, well, I hope kind of to continue with the special needs team, of course, and I actually hope to intend like on pursuing a career with special needs just because I enjoy it so much and I feel like that's something that I'd be really good at. What do you do exactly in cheer? So you're, uh, what is it, a CIT? Yes. What does that mean? So um, I'm a coach in training, so I volunteer my time to kind of like coach and help the kids and athletes. Um, so I'm a CIT, like a coach in training for special needs team, but also for a junior team at our gym as well. 
How did you get so connected in, into all of these things that you're doing, all of these activities? Was it you attended one meeting and then it just kept building from there? Is it because of your wonderful parents? <laughs> How did you become such a remarkable young person? Um, well, I mean, I couldn't have done it like all without my mom, of course, like my dad, <laughs> like all that stuff. And my siblings, my older brother has like kind of paved the way, like kind of, he's like got involved with things and I've kind of like jumped on those ideas as well. And we've kind of just built it off of each other's ideas, kind of, yeah. And the one thing I want to know is how do you balance everything? Because not only are you involved in everything, you're also on the honor roll. So how do you do this? Um, I sort of just like, I have to really prioritize. So like, cause I'm at practice every night of the week and like I coach in the middle of that as well. And I'm at school all day. Um, and my weekends are kind of full with practices and stuff like that. But I kind of just like find time, like I write lists and stuff of like what needs to be done first and kind of like deadlines and like I kind of work from that. You are an inspiration. That is great advice. Thanks so much for being here today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Up next, Grandview Kids Foundation. We'll be right back. That's really good for adults to know.